Hello, my name is Pete Forsyth, and I'm the principal of Wiki Strategies Consulting, and also the instructor for the free online course, Writing Wikipedia Articles. You can see the front page of our course right here, and if you're interested in learning more about the course, you can just go to Wikipedia and type WP colon Wiki Sue in the search bar to find this page. Uh, today I'm going to show you a few tricks around improving images on Wikimedia Commons. This is a screencast that is probably best described as intermediate. It assumes that you know a fair amount about how things fit together on Wikipedia. Um, and it'll cover a number, of, uh, a number of topics, so some may be more applicable to other situations than others. So I'm going to look at a photograph of Abraham Lincoln who is one of the more famous United States presidents. Uh, this is a file that I found on Wikimedia Commons. If you're not familiar with Wikimedia Commons, it is run by the same community that runs Wikipedia, but it's a media repository that serves Wikipedia in many different language editions and also a number of related sites like Wikisource, Wikinews, etc. Um, so this file caught my attention because if you, if you look at it, if you look at the description, you'll find that it says this is the most famous of the beardless photos. So of course, Abraham Lincoln is rather famous for his beard, but it's at least asserted in this description that this particular photo is of particular interest as being the most famous of, of those without a beard. So that to me stuck out as being a bit out of sync with the quality of the photograph. Uh, if, if you notice uh, right below the photo, it says no higher resolution available. So that means what we're looking at here is not just a preview. It's actually the highest resolution version of the photo that is on Wikimedia Commons. Another way to, to, um, to tell that is if you scroll down a little bit, um, you'll, you'll see the actual number of pixels in the file. And if, there, if this were a preview, if there were a, a bigger file um, that it was just showing a preview of, you would be able to see other sizes that you could download the photo in. But because we don't see those links, we know that this is actually the highest resolution available on Wikimedia Commons. So this seems a little strange for a photo that's this famous and this important. So um, I thought it might be nice to see if we could find a higher quality version to put on the article so that when someone's reading the Wikipedia article or an, a Wikipedia article that this is linked from, that they could download a higher uh, quality version of it pretty easily. Let's see how many Wikipedia articles are actually using this photo. So if we scroll down to the bottom of this page on Wikimedia Commons, we see these sections, file usage on Commons, which is not particularly important for these purposes. But then just below that, we see file usage on other wikis. And as you can see, in this case, um, it, it lists each language edition of Wikipedia as a separate section, and then the different uh, the different articles that link the file within that. So just on English Wikipedia, you see the article on Cooper Union links there. The article on Matthew Brady, who was the uh, the photographer who took this photo, links there, uh, and a couple of other. Wikipedia articles as well. And then you can also see that many different language editions of Wikipedia are using this file. So this, again, is demonstrating that this is a particularly important file. Before we go too far, it might be worthwhile to see if this is a duplicate. Um, that is, if there already is a higher quality version on Wikipedia under another name. So one way to do that is to, to look at the categories. Uh, and I'm not going to go into a thorough search here, but we'll do a quick look. Um, and so why don't we pick a category that's not likely to have too many different photos in it. Let's say Abraham Lincoln in 1860. So we'll click on that. And then we'll be able to just visually see, is there, are there any other copies of this photo? Um, so these are not the same. I'm going to scroll down a little further. Uh, and here we actually see, so this is the one that we're looking at. And then on the left here we see there is another one. Abraham Lincoln JPEG. But we can see from the size, the one we're looking at is 62 kilobits, kilobytes, and the other one is actually less. It's 41 kilobytes. So this also isn't a very high quality version. Um, before we go much further, let's just, let's go 
down a little more. It does look like this one is maybe a cropped version. Um, and I don't, I don't see any other copies of this particular photo. So um, the next thing to do is uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back up. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back to the, uh, Wiki, the Wikimedia Commons page for this file. And we're going to look at the description to get an idea of where the photo came from. So it tells us that this image is in the US Library of Congress's uh, database. And because old photographs and also photographs that are produced by the US government tend to be in the public domain, uh, usually there are pretty high quality versions out there uh, available for free reuse. So in this case, uh, the source section gives us a fair amount of information and there are a number of different links, but this one catches my attention. It's under the digital ID and then it gives us this this funky number, and that's a link. So because that says what digital ID it is, that's probably going to be a link exact to this exact file, not just to the General Library of Congress database. So I'm going to click on that, and I've got it open in another tab here. And this is the page that it takes you to. And so we can see right away that there are two. This this line here lists the the different versions of the file that are available for download from the Library of Congress, and uh, there are two JPEG versions. The second one here is uh, is actually a larger file. It's, this is higher quality than what we have. But actually, the highest quality is a TIFF uh, image. TIFF is a, a an image format that does not use compression, so it's uh, it's generally a higher quality uh, format than JPEG. Um, but it does tend to take up a fair amount of of disk space. So what we're going to do today is uh, I, I've already downloaded this file and I'm going to I'm going to save from the TIFF I'm going to save a JPEG version of it. So this is actually going to be a higher it's it's going to be a larger file than the existing JPEG. It's not going to be as large as the TIFF and uh, and we'll be able to upload that to the same page. So I'm going to come back to why I chose this later but that's what we're going to do. So I have, like I said, I've already downloaded the file. Uh, I'm going to pull that up in the, the save screen. So this is the program that I've used to, uh, to open the file. And in the JPEG options, which you'll get no, really no matter, what, um, no matter what image editor you're using, you're going to have this choice when you save a JPEG. Uh, it's going to... The, the main setting to look for is this quality. So it's in this case, it's a slider from low to good or low to high quality would probably be a better way to phrase it. Right now it's at 75% and you can see as I slide it, that number changes. I'm gonna slide it all the way to the right. So we're gonna make the very highest quality JPEG that's possible from this TIFF. And then uh, for an image name, I've chosen Lincoln, no beard, high quality. So uh, for the process that we're going to follow, it doesn't matter what title I give it. I just, for the time being, need to give it a title that I'm going to recognize when I save it to my file system. So I'm going to click Save. And then we're going to go back to the Wikimedia Commons page. I'm going to scroll down. And this file history section is going to show us the thumbnail of all different versions of the file that have been uploaded to Wikimedia Commons. So in some cases, people will have updated the file several times, and you'll see a number of lines here. In this case, we only see the one line uh, with this one copy of the file. But right under it, you see this upload a new version of this file. So we're going to click that. And then we're going to navigate to the downloads folder. Oh, no, I'm sorry. So, we, so that's going to take us to this upload file screen. Scroll down, and you'll see this source file and you click the browse button now we're going to navigate to where we saved it on the hard drive there it is i'll click open and you can see it's now ready to be uploaded oops i didn't mean to click that again um and then you should and and here this is why the title didn't matter because it's going to preserve the title that it already has on wikimedia commons so uh, like I said before, the title that I chose was just enough for me to be able to identify it and find the file again. 
And then under file changes, we should explain what we're doing. So I'm going to say upload high resolution. OK. And then we'll scroll down. You can choose to watch this file. That's usually a good idea to add it to your watch list. Uh, and I'll click up Upload File. So this is going to take a few moments because it's kind of a large file. And uh, while we wait for that, I'm going to just click over into this other tab and show you. This is a, a nice tool um, when you're when you're looking to see where a file is used on the uh, on the internet. So in this case, uh, I'm, I'm actually I'm going to go back to the Library of Congress site. I'm going to right click on the image itself and I'm going to copy the image location. So this is going to copy to my clipboard the internet address, the URL of the image uh, file itself. I'm going to go back to this site, which is tini.com, and I'm going to paste that URL here. And I'm going to search. And so this is going to come up with, it's, it's going to look all across the internet for any image that looks the same as this one. So we can see there are 128 results. Again, this is confirming that it's a well-known photograph. You see that it's listed on Wikipedia. Uh, it's on someone's blog. It's on this other site. And this is, this is all the version that is at that particular size. It's also going to find versions that are at other sizes. So if we scroll down, here we've got one at a slightly different resolution. It's in a different format. It's in GIF instead of JPEG. So this is a useful tool for uh, exploring all kinds of files that are on Commons if you want to see where else they're used on the internet. You might want that to see whether it's a copyright violation. You might want that to see whether there's a higher resolution version of it, etc. OK, so I'm going to go back to the Abraham Lincoln page. Now we can see this is our original file. And now we can see that uh, you can tell by the extra borders and everything that this higher, higher resolution version has been uploaded. I'm going to scroll us back down to this place that shows us the different revisions. So you can see these two revisions now next to each other. And it tells you the dimensions, too. So you can see the, the width was 311 pixels on the original one. And now it's 4,707. So it's, it's a substantially higher resolution file. Um, one thing I am going to do, and this is just because I'm doing a, a quick job right now, is I'm actually going to revert what I just did. So I'm going to click this Revert button to revert back to this version. And I'm going to type the reason in here, and I'll explain it a little bit more. Un or, uh, revert to cropped version. And the reason that I'm doing this is because this file is used in so many Wikipedia articles and so many different languages, I want to respect that someone uh, chose to, uh, to crop out the borders and that someone uh, also, I think in this case, um, uh, cho chose to sharpen up the image a little bit to make the lights a little bit lighter and the darks a little bit darker. So uh, while it may be worthwhile to go back and, uh, and redo that crop and, and the sharpening and, and uh, increasing the contrast in a way that results in a higher quality file. I'm not going to take the time to do that at the moment. So the end result of what we've done here is not going to have any direct impact on how any of these Wikipedia articles look. And I'd say that's, a, that's an advantage, because I don't want to do something that, that broadly impacts 16 different language editions of Wikipedia without really being sure of what I'm doing. But what it does do, uh, and I'm going, to, I'm going to show you this by clicking through. I'm going to click on this English Wikipedia article. And let's scroll down until we find this file, this photo. OK, so now if I click on this photo, I'm going to actually click on this little icon that's going to take us to that description page that we were just looking at. And, uh, and again, I'm going to click it a second time on this, this. Right now we're on the Wikipedia page. So if I go down here, this is a file from Wikimedia Commons. I'm going to go to the description page on Commons. It looks similar, but it, uh, this is actually the, the source page. So as a reader, if I were to do that, 
I would at least now have direct access to that high quality version of it. So I might so so now if someone else comes along and they see that that higher quality version is in the revision history, they might choose to do that cropping and lightening and, and contrast adjust, adjustment. Or if if uh, just a reader of Wikipedia is working on a high quality print publication, uh, they might want access to the higher quality version so they can print out a nice big uh, plate in the book. And this web resolution version just wouldn't cut it for that. So, uh, so what we've done is, is take any reader a step closer to having access to this high quality version of the photo. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, again, I'm gonna bring us back to the page for the Writing Wikipedia Articles course. Uh, once again, this is a six week online course that is available for free. Uh, we're gonna be offering it starting on the 25th of February, 2014. So if you'd like to join us, please go to Wikipedia and type in WP colon Wikisu, and then click in this orange box to enroll for the course. Uh, you also may want to just explore these courses if you're looking at this video later uh, and find some of the pages that we've created. Uh, they may be useful learning resources for you. Thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you in the course.